Welcome to a new Vintage is the New World how-to videos. This time I will teach you how to install and use macOS 8.1 on your PC. If you are 20 years old or younger, you might not know that once upon a time Apple Mac computers were called by their birth name Macintosh. These machines from the last century used to have a different brain than it does today a Motorola 68000 CPU series with PowerPC architecture. It was only in 2005 when Apple would start to adopt the Intel processors, the same architecture used by PC since, like, ever. By 1997, the Apple operating system was on version 8.1, and if you wish to use it today on a, your modern PC, you could use one of the many 68,000 CPU emulators available. This is a possible task for anyone with base computer skills, but today you have a way better option. In one of those projects that people ask, why though? And the answer is always, why not? Felix Riesberg, a developer working for Slack, has created an Electron standalone app called Macintosh.js that contains a fully featured Mac OS 8.1 running in it. Felix's work consists in putting the piece together, install OS 8.1 and a lot of companion applications, so you can have a feeling of what was to use a Macintosh back in 1997. The bundle contains classic games like Oregon Trail, Dungeons and Dragons, Duke Nukem 3D and others. For the business side, there are many Adobe programs, like Photoshop and Illustrator, all using a legal trial version from that time, of course. Before we start and manage your expectations, the only caveat is that the application cannot connect to the Internet. However, it does have installed Internet Explorer and Netscape browsers, which still can take you to the early days of the Internet memory lane while browsing local files. The project is open source and contains installers for Mac, Windows and Linux. I'm going to show here how to install and use it on Windows. The installers are all available at the Macintosh.js repository on GitHub. You can find the link at the bottom of the article I've published on Vintage is the New World website. I will provide the link in the description below. When you are at the GitHub page, just scroll down and you'll find all the installers for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. I will use the 64-bit version of the Windows installer. After it downloads the 250MB file, you can click it to begin installation. It takes just a few seconds to install Macintosh.js and in no time you should see the macOS 8.1 boot screen and right after the macOS 8.1 in all its glory. Just to illustrate what I said about the lack of internet connection and your ability to browse local files, let's click on the macOS info center here which will open the ancient Internet Explorer 3.0. Following some of the links that explains what's new on macOS 8.1, you'll be able to glance at the late 90s web page design trends. Another interesting piece of software is the Netscape browser. Once the king of the internet. I will copy and paste the same address from the Internet Explorer into Netscape so we can take a look at the same pages. Next, let's take a look of a couple of games available on Macintosh.js. The first one is Oregon Trail, 
an educational software produced by Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium in 1974. The idea of the game is to travel to Oregon during the 19th century while you have to manage the supplies you acquired at the beginning of the game. This version we see here was released in 1992 with improved graphics, of course. Next is a more graphic demanding game that doesn't need an introduction, Duke Nukem 3D. Let's just take a quick look how the game performs on Macintosh JS. Let's rock. Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. The software bundle installed by Felix contains also a couple of movies, so you can taste the Macintosh.js performance while playing movies. As you can see here, we are literally decades from full screen 4K movies. Playing with what is installed is fun, but what if I want to install a new piece of software? Macintosh.js has a pre-configured shared folder between macOS and the host operating system. On the Mac desktop, you will see a shared folder called Unix. If you click on it to open, you will see another folder called Macintosh.js, which is currently empty. This is the place where we can copy files to from our Windows machine. The first step is to find a compatible program or game to install on macOS. A good resource for that is emaculation.com, which contains some links for Macintosh software databases, where you can find probably any piece of software ever produced for the 68000 CPU computer. To make things easier, you can scroll down the same page and under the game section, click this shareware game called Space Junkie, a very nice shoot them up that I haven't heard about. To download, just click the link. Since the file is very small, it will be downloaded in no time. After the download is complete, open the downloads folder and you'll see the file sjunkie.hqx. On a second file explorer window, open your user folder, usually under C column backslash users, your username, and in there you'll see a folder called macintosh.js. Click on that folder and move the sjunk.hqx file from the downloads folder into it. Macintosh.js will only be able to see the new file if you restart the application. If you have it running, click the quit link at the bottom of the window, then click Quit Anyway. After it's closed, just run Macintosh.js again.
this time, if you click the Unix share, then the Macintosh.js folder, you will see the sgen.hqx file already copied into it. HQX is a compressed format, similar to zip, for example. To decompress it, simply double-click the file and you will see a new spacejunk 1.2 folder showing up for you. Click to open that folder and then click the Space Junkie icon to start the game. If you can copy files to the macOS 8.1, you can also copy files from it. In fact, the process is very similar, with just an important difference that I will show you. To make it more fun, let's create some art using Photoshop 3 on the Macintosh and take that file to the Windows folder. Now that my amazing art is ready, we need to save it in the Macintosh.js folder we used earlier to copy Space Junkie. So first select Unix, then Macintosh.js. Name the file and select the format you want. Here I'm just keeping JPEG. To show you clear what happens, I am opening on the left side the Windows Explorer window in the same Macintosh.js folder we used before. On the Mac, I will open the Unix and then Macintosh.js folder as well. You can see that here the image file is present, but it's not present on the Windows Explorer side. To properly copy it on the Windows side, I have to select the menu Special and then shut down, which will close Macintosh.js and save all files onto my Windows machine. Just be careful. If you don't do exactly like that when closing Macintosh.js, all files you create in this operating system will be lost. As you can see, now my Windows Explorer contains all files that were created in the emulated OS. I'm adding the JPG extension here just because I forgot to do that on Mac. This way I can more easily click the file to open it on Windows. Now you can not only visualize the file but also share with your friends your amazing art. That's it! Now you can not only play with this old operating system on your modern PC, but you can also install in it new software as well as creating new content using the OS and save it onto your Windows machine. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe.